The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, the new productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Search Insider. My name is Glenn Spillman, and you are listening live on Armed Radio. Coming at you, 60 different countries all around the world. Hello, Boston. Hello, Midwest. And hello, West Coast, man. I I hear that the degrees in Boston is just bone-chilling freaking old i hear that um some places in texas same way power outages all this kind of stuff well my friends here in california it uh was a pretty nice day actually i know i brag about it a lot as uh it's i i mean right now even though it is dark it's a little bit cloudy outside where i presently am it's still 52 degrees. Not bad. Um, even in, uh, well, San Diego, it's 64 degrees. Uh, about 77 earlier during the day. Perfect surf weather. So anyone that snowed in, man, I, I apologize. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. Uh, but even in Lake Tahoe, man, uh, up in the mountains, um, it is 42 degrees. Not too bad. A little bit of snow. It's going to be snowing tomorrow. Anyway, this is the freaking sports show, not a dadgum weather channel. So, everybody, welcome to the show. And uh, <clears throat> got some, uh, well, Chicago Bulls, who are 17 and 27, are beating presently the Golden State Warriors 36 and 9. And it doesn't matter what. Football, baseball, hockey, soccer, whatever. You get these teams that are low on the totem pole that will beat teams that are flourishing, even the top seed. For instance, this weekend, or this past weekend, I was on a movie set. I was filming... um, A, uh, a film, uh, I was acting in a film called Soul Cage. Okay? Um, and it's a, it's a, uh, it's an MMA slash, it's got some mob action going on in there, so I was in that film. So, when the football game, uh, came on, we would, uh, put it <clears throat> on, uh, gameplay so we could see what was going on and whatnot, and I told guys... I told everyone on there, I said, who do you think is going to win? Everybody picked the Falcons. And I'm like, I'm taking the Eagles. And it's not going to be a pretty game, but I'm taking the Eagles. The Eagles are at home. They are um, pissed off still, but for whatever reason why, that they lost at home the last game, which is stupid because... It doesn't matter if you've clinched a playoff berth and you're for sure 100% going in the playoffs. I think it has always been, um, you know, my thing. I understand there there, there are players that want to be rested. I understand coaches and all this kind of stuff. I get that. But to lose your last game at home, especially against one of the biggest rivalries in football against the Dallas Cowboys, the Eagles were riding into the playoffs on a somber note. Doesn't matter how you look at it. Yeah, they had a um, a, a playoff worth clinch. So freaking what? It's a somber mood. Well, zero points in the first quarter. I mean, what was this, freaking field goal frenzy? I mean, they scored 15 points in the entire game. The Atlanta Falcons 
What the crap happened to them? Can we all say choke, choke, choke? When you're that close to the goal line, they pull the freaking Seattle Seahawks. When you're that close to the line, goal line, you run the freaking football. You slam it down their throats. You run, 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 run. Okay? Um, Matt Ryan, a anemic uh, 210 yards, 22 for 36. Only one TD. Well, Nick Foles didn't do much there. 246 yards, 23 for 30, but he had a better average. So what? Zero TD, zero, none, none. Back one time, Ryan was sacked three times. Rushing. Freaking dismal on both sides. Atlanta had 86 rushing yards. Um, <clears throat> Philadelphia, 10 more. At 96. Dismal. 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 Okay. Um, receiving. Well, that's a little better. You know, Julio Jones went for 101 yards on nine receptions. Total yards for the uh, Atlanta was 210. And we had, uh, with uh, Philadelphia, a little bit better with 246 yards. But... It just it just was a boring freaking game. You you would think that the game would be a bit more exciting, especially last year when the Atlanta Falcons had a glass of suck in the second half of the Super Bowl, and the Patriots ran it down the freaking throat, came back and won the game. You figured they would learn a lesson, did they? No, they didn't. Because what do they do? Uh, yeah, didn't score in the entire freaking second half. Goose egg in the third, goose egg in the freaking fourth. So, whose fault was that in the game? Was it, uh, was it Matt Ryan's? Was it the moron who let the ball go right through his hands? Oh, granted, if you look at that play, people are like, oh, if he would have caught that, they would have won the game. No, nah, no, nah, they wouldn't have, because if you look at where his foot landed, um, Landed just the tip of his toes, by about two inches, on the white line. Not the cocaine line, the white line. The out-of-bounds line. See you later. Goodbye. Um, and uh, they, 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 I, they, they didn't learn from last year. And you know what? I have no pity for them. I have zero zip out of nothing. Too bad. So sad. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome into the show Casey from Simply Casey, uh, which will be airing after my show at um, 7 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, she presently is in uh, Arlington, Texas, checking out and around the new stadium that the Texas Rangers are building only... 23 years after the other one was built. I'll get into that a little bit later. Anyway, Casey, welcome to the show. Hello, Glenn. Um, apparently, someone has pissed off Elsa because um, it is cold here. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, about it's you. Cold. It is very cold. Oh, well, where I am, I've got a shirt on, and um, I'm sitting here because, um, well, I, I'm going to let our viewers know that... Um, I am uh, yet in another production, and instead of doing replays or doing anything, I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you listeners, and I freaking um, do what I, I'm sitting in my car outside the studio, and um, I'm going to be doing the show till 6.30, and then um, I got to go in and uh, get my acting on and um, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but folks, I want to say, simply Casey, um, when she talks about making your life easier and 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 helping you um, deal with adversity in life, this is proof in the pudding, and this is her stepping up, and I appreciate it. 
Um, she's stepping in, and she's going to take over the second half of the show um, with you guys. And she's going to be talking from a fan's point of view. Um, uh, she's going to be talking about Dallas Cowboys. She's going to be talking about the, the new stadium, about what's going on there. And um, Jerry World next door to it and all of these. So she's right now out in front of the stadium checking it out. And I don't know who she's talked to today and, and, and whatnot, but she will get into that. But I will say this. It is a $1.2 billion stadium. And people ask, why are they building a new stadium? Well, they're building a new stadium because the owner wants to sell. And that is um, a terrible thing. <laughs> yeah, well, they're... they're, I, like, they're I, freak- I hope they don't move the Rangers somewhere else because then all my um, Rangers memorabilia is going to be like, what? Well, no, that might be good for your, your uh, Rangers memorabilia. I mean, okay, look. Um, the lead singer, uh, from the Cranberries, was it two days ago, died suddenly. Well, on the Apple Music Store, her music sales 100%, but it was, and I looked at it, it was 900, comma, zero, 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 so it was 900,000%. Wow. That's what her sales That's- went. So as far as well, sports memorabilia goes, could actually um, uh, elevate it a little bit, if you will. Uh, but I, anyway, I want to say uh, one quick thing. Um, this isn't. This has to do with with the entire YouTube um, universe, and as a journalist and a sports reporter, um, and there's many people on YouTube that have channels and different things. YouTube playing a little bit of shenanigans so people that are trying to do a youtube channel monetize youtube channel youtube's kind of crushing their balls on this a little bit um so the threshold that youtube is saying you got to have four thousand hours of watch time within the past 12 months and a thousand subscribers so all these um new people that are coming on youtube it's kind of they're kind of taking them over if you will so uh not hundreds, but hundreds of thousands of people are getting screwed over by YouTube. You know, so that, we'll, we'll get into that later. And Casey, if you want to talk about that on your show or a little bit after this one, and that's that's uh, more power to you. But I want to get in real quick. Um, so I picked freaking Eagles, okay? And everyone thought I was stupid. But the next game, they thought I was on absolute crack cocaine because I said, The Jaguars are going to beat the Steelers at home. A 10-6 team is going to beat a 13-3 team. And they're like, you're on crap. Absolutely no freaking way. I said, look, the entire year, the Jaguars have stepped up against elite teams. Now, granted, let the freaking Steelers come back in the fourth quarter and score 21 points, and they almost lost, but the Jaguars won. I also said the Vikings would win. They didn't believe that. But I was spot on, and anyone could have picked freaking uh, the uh, Patriots were going to win. But here is the funny, 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 funny thing. If, 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 if the Jaguars, the Patriots, and go to the Super Bowl, that is going to, Robert Kraft's head's going to freaking implode. Um, I'm going to laugh at Tom Brady because he's the douchebag that ran Garoppolo out of freaking town because he was getting jealous. That's a whole other story for another show. That was kind of a little puss thing to do. But I'm not hoping the Jaguars, when I actually hope that the Patriots go to the Super Bowl. Um, but if the Vikings beat the Eagles then the Vikings are the only team right now that could beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But the Patriots, I believe, will beat the Jaguars. No problem whatsoever. It's going to be 48 degrees in Foxborough as of right now. It's going to be 51 in Philly. 
I doubt the Philadelphia Eagles will beat the freaking uh, Vikings. So my prediction is we're going to see a Patriots-Vikings Super Bowl, which is going to be cool because this year the Super Bowl's in Minnesota. And if Minnesota is going to be in the Super Bowl, hosting the Super Bowl, home in the Super Bowl, that hasn't happened in a million years or so. But, um... That's going to be interesting um, game, to say the least. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, I think, uh, I'm, I, I'm just going to save my picks, Patriots. Um, Eagles. So, uh, AC, real quick, on your show after this, what are you going to be talking about? Um, well, I'm going to be talking about bullying and adult bullying um, and abuse. Um, not only from celebrities, uh, mostly from people and everything. And um, I know that uh, men as well as women um, have been ab- abused All by right. Well, she's partners. cutting out, ladies and gentlemen. There's a little bit of uh, static going through there. I don't know if it's the weather. It, it probably is. Can you or, hear me now? Or, or, or what's going on there. But uh, anyway, Casey, if you can hear this, you're cutting out a little bit. So... Uh, um, and again, check your uh, connection because I don't know if you're. You are, um... Can you hear me now? Oh wow! Are you Verizon? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure what what's going on with that. So, I mean, it could be it is the weather. Um, the weather is kind of um, we're supposed to get down to 18 degrees now. Um, I know, and and I'm actually uh, in the hotel lobby because that's where the free Wi-Fi is. <laughs> They don't have it in the room. So um, you can hear some people come and talk to me. But, uh, yeah, it's, the weather is not the greatest right now. It is deteriorating. So. Okay, well, let me ask you this. As a as a football fan, and I, I used to have this ex-girlfriend when I, when I lived in Vegas. This chick was spot on on picking football teams. I mean, how the crap do you do that? You know what she told me? She goes, well, I like the logo, or I like, you know, whatever. So, um, off the picks, the Patriots against the Jaguars, who do you have? All right. Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm going to say well, the Jaguars. Well, don't Jaguar. think too hard. Don't think too hard. Your head I'm going to say boy. Jaguars. I All like right. Well, yeah. Oh, you do realize that we are on a Boston station, right? I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Hey, hey, Boston fans in the Arlington area, um, Casey's sitting outside the uh, Arlington Stadium, so if you want to go, uh, you know, egg her car or something, that's where she's at. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. in the hotel. I'm, there's a oh, hotel you... over there by the stadium. <laughs> oh, it's see, now you outside. Like, now you let everybody know where you're at. Um, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, who do you got between Vikings and Eagles? I would say Vikings. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um. So, Casey, as a as a fan of sports, and I know that you are a big Dallas Cowboy fan. You're a Texas Ranger fan, and you're a um. Dallas Mavericks fan. Now, you live in Texas. Now, are all your fan base, is it all Dallas? Or do you like anybody else in any other city? Um, I don't like the Spurs. Um, and I'll tell you why I don't like the Spurs. Because when the Mavericks were in the playoffs and they were going to, where they actually were the champions of that division, they were playing against the Spurs. And the Spurs basically boycotted anybody. They prevented anyone with a driver's, they checked the driver's license. Anyone who had a Dallas address or in that vicinity would not be allowed to purchase a ticket. So that they could pack the stadium with nothing but Spurs fans. And they prevented Dallas Cow- or not Dallas Cowboys, but um, Mavericks fans from purchasing tickets. So uh, I have a question. Uh, it's a poor sportsmanship. Oh well, it's 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 gay, yeah. But what happens if, say, I don't know, um, 
I came out there, or, or, or another team was made, and people from that city, from that state, would come in. Did they only do it to Dallas fans? They only did to the Dallas area. That was it. If you had it from Houston or anything like that, you could come in. They also prevented people, anyone who was wearing Mavericks gear, to come into the stadium, even if they had a ticket. They just refunded your ticket. I don't know how legal that is, um, honestly. Now, they did this... There's a huge uh, hubbub. Well, they did this in baseball two years ago. There was this um, fan that came in, and he sat behind the... Um, went to uh, Arizona to watch the Diamondbacks game, and no, he no. wore the uh, opposing team's jersey because he's the fan of the jersey, and he was in the camera angle the entire time because he was directly behind the um, batter's... Uh, the, uh, the catcher and the ump in the batter's box. Um, the home plate, I mean. And they made him, they, they said, hey man, would you wear this jersey? They, are, they made him take his shirt off, put on a Diamondbacks jersey, and um, the guy raised holy hell. And, um, oh yeah, dude, the Spurs, uh, that, that, I did not know that. That's, that's, that's pretty and, and shiny. It's, it's, it's because of that poor sportsmanship that I will have nothing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I will not support that because that is not good sportsmanship. I was, I mean, they were to allow the person to come in and play fair, that's one thing, but no, not support that team because, um, now, the Houston Texans, I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, I, I grew well, up with They're Dallas. in Houston. Why? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you you know what you know what other team was in Houston before the Texans gym, don't you? Yes, the Houston Oilers. All right, well, good. Yeah, well, uh, do, you, do you know what baseball team won the World Series? Uh, yes, the Houston Astros. The Houston assholes. Yes. Um, so <laughs> um, Jimmy is in the corner there. You know. Um, Joe is, uh, <laughs> Joe's in the corner there. Every time you swear or something, say something uncouth, he's in the corner there crying and going, why me? Why me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, why, by the way, no, why, um, why me? give a shout me, out. Why me is a, uh, why me is a Chinese hooker that, uh, that lives down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, speaking of that, we need to say a happy birthday, um, because... Somebody celebrating a birthday today. Um, well, I think you know this person, Glenn, and if you don't know this person, uh, you might want to go to your Facebook page because... What day is today? <laughs> January 17th? Yes, it's January 17th. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look on the Facebook because I freaking have no idea. Um, well, it's Betty White's birthday today. Betty White, happy birthday. How the, crap, how the crap am I supposed to know Betty freaking White? No, but it's also, um, and I'm so sorry, I'm having a brain fart here. I'm actually having to look up myself because I don't know this. It just came on my feed this morning. Oh, it's Joe Savino's birthday today. He's celebrating his birthday. And if I was a good singer, I'd probably wish sing happy birthday to him. But I hope he has a really why, good why, happy why birthday. Why don't you do it anyway? Why don't you sing happy birthday anyway? Uh, because I think someone actually paid me not to sing because um, I why don't, don't you, uh, why don't you do the whole Marilyn Monroe kind of sexy freaking <laughs> birthday thing, man? Happy birthday. There you go. <laughs> Um, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got about a couple more minutes before, uh, the races and C from Simply Casey will be taken over and she's going to be talking about um, the ups and downs of the Dallas Cowboys. She's going to be talking about the ups and downs um, of, uh, you know, the, the Texas Rangers <laughs> and about the two years in a row that went to the freaking World Series and two times. They were one out <laughs> away from winning the World Series, and those little douchebags sucked it up, 
So you know what? When, when that happened, I lost all respect for the Texas Rangers. They could suck it. You know what's really sad they is when they were it. in the World Series, uh, series no, um, they were in the playoffs uh, for, to go to the World Series. I was on an airplane from Miami back to Dallas, and they were playing it over the main uh, speaker in the, in the airplane. And the Rangers hit a, a home run. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yeah. so excited about it. And I <clears throat> some people were right. clapping whenever they hit a home run. And I was like, woohoo! <laughs> and everyone right. well, hey. looked at me. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um I gotta get on set right now. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in to Sports Insider and, and listening. But uh, Casey from Simply Casey is doing me the great honor of taking over. Um, and she's going to be uh, taking over for the rest of the show and tune into her show directly after. So, hey, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Thank you, Casey. You're quite welcome. Welcome, Glenn. All right. Take, take over. Not the, really. the show is yours. The show is yours. Okay, thank you. Well, happy birthday, Joe. Um, I hope you have a happy birthday. And you are listening to Orange Radio. And this is coming to you in 60 countries worldwide. And this is Sports Insider. Now, a lot of you guys throughout the country are experiencing cold weather. So someone has really pissed off Elsa um, somewhere out there. But uh, let's talk to you about... Um, we all have our own special sports teams that we are passionate about. I mean, some people are so passionate about it. You see memes on the internet if their team loses, they rip out their TV. I saw a meme of a guy ripping out his huge TV, putting it in the snowy lawn, and beating the TV like they. So, um, yeah, it was just quite, you know. Um, it's hard you know, to see somebody take an expensive piece of merchandise and beat the crap out of it. And I hope I can say crap on the air. I apologize if I can't. Um, beat the tar out of it. And uh, people have burnt jer- their jerseys. They've done a lot of things because they're so impassioned about their team. Well, me, growing up in the 80s, uh, we all wanted, in my neighborhood, we all wanted to be Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. And the guys wanted to be Dallas Cowboys players. So we would practice cheerleading in the front yard. And I kind of got a cursory. Honestly, growing up, I thought the Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bears were the only two sports teams that were out there. I had no idea uh, because my dad, my parents were not sports people. My grandfather was. And so um, we would, I would, that's the only place I would learn is, is from the schoolyard. Well, my senior year, I actually moved to Dallas-Fort Worth. But in 1993, we went to the Super Bowl. And actually, I don't think I watched that Super Bowl. Um, I did watch the Super Bowl because I think it was when Michael Jackson did his Super Bowl show, which is one of the highest grossing Super Bowl um, halftime shows that are out there. And that was where he was doing the Pepsi-Cola, and he was, there were these giant jumbotrons out there and he was popping up and they had multiple ones. You have to see it on YouTube. I'll, I'll have a link to it. And then he popped out of the middle and he did all of his songs and uh, it was this really a magical thing. It's really a powerful show and, and you know, most of the half times nowadays are not as good as they used to be but um, maybe we'll get back to that. But I know that the Dallas Cowboys, they won, in, they won five times uh, 1971, 1977, 19, oh my gosh, <laughs> my, my freeze goes, 1992, they went to the Super Bowl, then they went to the Super Bowl again in 1983, the double header there, and then 1995. Now, in 1993, because they went to the Super Bowl, I went to the grocery store and I started collecting South Cowboys memorabilia. And so I guess you could say I've been a fan since 1993, but probably older than that because I grew up, you know, wanting to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, but just not being coordinated enough to do that. So it takes a lot, uh, you know, I'm I'm not as impassioned as some people are to where I beat my television if they lose, but 
you know, to me, they are America's team. They, they I, I, I just have to like them. My backup team is the local Raiders, which that might not be my backup team. I like their colors. But, um, yeah, and I, and I hope one day that the Dallas Cowboys, I think every Dallas Cowboys fan would like them to go back to the Super Bowl. But they seem to just have this hurdle that they get to a point and it's just, it's almost like hitting a brick wall. And they just cannot seem to get over that threshold. Now, we, of course, know uh, of the dream team that was, you know, oh, my gosh, who remembers Emmett Smith? Man, he was a powerhouse. And Troy Aikman, I mean, wow. Troy Aikman, Deion Smith, uh, Deion Sanders, all that, the dream team. I mean, I remember buying a baseball cap that had, like, the Warner Brothers characters, you know, uh, Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd and all this other stuff on there. This was, like, in the night. But, I mean, it was just, you know, such a powerhouse. And we just have not been able to, you know, since the retirement, we just have not been able to find, you know, that dream team, that something that clicks. And then, of course, we had Gary and Jerry. And, you know, there's a bunch of controversy saying that the Dallas Cowboys are cursed because the simple reason is that we fired Jerry way back in the day. They haven't won a Super Bowl since. Well, that's quite a bit of long time uh, and everything. And, of course, the Chicago Cubs, they thought they were cursed and everything. And then once that guy passed away, they would win the Super Bowl. Not Super Bowl, but the... <laughs> <laughs> they would win the World uh, World Series, and they did. And I remember seeing that in Back to the Future, and I was thinking back in the day in the 90s, oh, gosh, you know, that probably won't happen. And they won a year after the Back to the Future, because if you remember, Back to the Future was, they went to 2015, and then they won in 2016. So that was quite interesting with that. But... Um, in 1994, they had two stadiums for the Texas Rangers. They built that beautiful stadium. They opened it in 1994. I was a senior in high school. And um, I just remember going, wow, we should use the old stadium for youth um, sports, and we should use the new stadium for, you know, the, the Rangers. And, of course, nobody agreed with that. And so they imploded that old stadium and made it into a parking lot. So what they're going to do now, and I feel like they're going to do this, is the parking lot that they are building the new stadium in, and they've already broken ground, and it's just, I've actually parked in that parking lot whenever I went to the Dallas Cowboys uh, stadium when they opened their, their stadium for the first time. I went to the very first game, and it was against the Oakland Raiders, which was quite interesting. Um, of course, Dallas Cowboys unfortunately lost that game in their own stadium, and that was the year that they hosted the Super Bowl, and they didn't go to the Super Bowl, which was bittersweet. But, um, yeah, I mean, the stadium was gorgeous, you guys. It, it's very high-tech. It's gorgeous. And, uh, I mean, those TVs are just, they're there live, but you find yourself looking at those giant TVs and watching the game from the giant TV as opposed to what you see on the, on the floor. And when they have the pyrotechnics for the opening ceremony, you can actually feel the heat from the pyrotechnics because it is so wow. <laughs> it's the best word you can describe. It's like, what? <laughs> but um, the Texas Rangers Stadium, um, which that was the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, so let's segue over to Texas Rangers. Ranger Stadium, a lot, they actually don't um, have some amenities that they really need to be competitive with other stadiums. And so what they're trying to do is basically bring their stadium into the country and have, you know, a, a fan experience. Uh, if you've seen the, the different renderings of the stadium, the new stadium, it's just, wow. But... 
fair to all these other stadiums. Um, the Arizona team, they only spent $520 million on their stadium. Seattle, they spent $742 million on theirs. Houston, Houston, mind you, who just won, spent $345 million on their team. Milwaukee spent $560 Miami, $537 million. And the Texas Rangers, $1.1 billion, with a B, dollars on their stadium. Um, and their stadium is going to also have a retractable roof so that, um, I guess that's the thing, is that the stadium with the retractable roof is the, the, the toy that every stadium wants. Dallas Cowboys wanted a retractable roof, and they basically made a new stadium just so they could have it. Texas Rangers like, hey, I want a retractable roof, too, so that they could do that. It makes sense being in Texas. We do get rain. We do have extremes. They can close the stadium down and air condition it. They can also do that so that they can play the game while it's raining outside. Um, so it does make sense, and it does allow them to make themselves available to their opportunities there. So they plan on having a fan experience, but of course they're going to deck it out in Texas Rangers further, but it's going to be quite impressive with its own hotel and, I mean, just, the, you know, they're going to have a live by Lowe's hotel, they're going to have a Texas live experience, and then they're going to have the ballpark. Now, the ballpark looks like it's going to be smaller than what it currently is. So that means that ticket prices, I guarantee it, are going to go up. So you're going to have to pay a little bit more, probably a lot more, to go see your Texas Rangers. So, and, of course, with that, um, Arlington is going to seriously bank on a lot of this because they are actually moving to where Arlington is now going to be of, of sports experiences. They're opening up museums and other things um, where neighborhoods used to be. Um, I've lived in Dallas, Fort Worth, 1990. So I, until I moved down here to Austin, but I, you know, I still remember all these places in Arlington and everything. But you've got the Six Flags Over Texas, you've got the Texas Rangers, all within that short, like literally down the block from each other. And it is drawing in such huge amounts of money, and they're so close to the airport that it really will boost not only the population, but it will boost fan attendance, and they will maximize on that. Uh, the sad thing is that the taxpayers pay to build the stadium, and once the stadium is open, they pay to get into the stadium, which to me, I think that's like double dipping there, but... Uh, fans are happy to do it. I just hope that the owners, you know, kind of take that into consideration, but they won't because they're all about the money um, on everything. But, yeah, it's going to be quite the experience. They're going to have live bands playing out front like they do at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. The Dallas Cowboys Stadium, they have a pre-show in the parking lot. It's called the parking lot where they have the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders come out, do a little bit of a number. They have live bands. They have, it's like a pep rally before the game or a tailgating party before the game to get the fans riled up and excited about going inside. Then they have stores and, and restaurants inside the stadium once you get in there. So not only are you banking on, stores where you get much merchandise, but you also can go to the restaurants and look at the game while you're eating, um, the Texas Rangers Stadium will have the same similar experience. They're going to have like a pep rally area to get the audience jazzed up by looking at bands and you know, getting them all hyped up and everything. And also there's going to be a fan experience store where you can buy all the merchandise and things like that. And that will be available outside of the stadium for you to purchase, uh, you know, year-round without having to go inside the stadium. So just being outside in that area, which will be free for the generalized public, you can go and see this you know, burst of excitement uh, right before you go inside. 
And if you're, uh, you know, are not able to go inside, you will have that experience there. Now, I am not exactly sure how this is going to affect the new baseball season because we are several weeks away from opening day for baseball. And they have broken ground. I mean, it is a mud pit over there right now because it's been snowing and icing and everything else. There is very limited parking, right? I mean, with that as a parking lot. But right now, because it is torn up, there is hardly any parking over there. So you can be sure that if you have a, uh, a ranger ticket, you're going to be paying through the nose park your vehicle to go watch this game. So just keep that in mind that it is going to be quite expensive. Um, I remember, I think I paid $30 to park my vehicle to go to the Dallas Cowboys game, and I was parking in BFE paying $30. If you wanted to pay park closer, it was $50, and I just could not. I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, $50 to park my vehicle in a open space. I was like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it is getting more and more expensive to be the fan. Um, and so I think what will happen is, is that if it becomes too expensive, too greedy, if people get too greedy, um, I think what will happen is they will have, you know, maybe some specials or something like that because, you know, we're not... Stadiums are no go without the fans. You've got to have fans in those stadium seats. You've got to have merchandise being sold and things like that. That's where they make their money to keep everything going. But also, this new stadium, we're being told in the press release of the um, marketing deal that they, they gave us, um, is that basically... Um, they're going to use this for concert venues. That's Cowboy Stadium does do concerts. Not as much as, you know, certain other stadiums, but I think that they do do concerts there. I mean, I got concerts to children, you know, little league uh, sports teams playing, a high school team uh, playing in, you know, practicing on the field itself. Um, of course, you do have in the fall for the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, um, you have the recording of the Dallas, Cow um, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team go from start to finish. And for all the ladies out there, they will be doing auditions for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders because they audition every single year. Um, you have to earn that spot every single year. So that will be happening in the next whole week. So if you are a good dancer and you can do the jumping split and you are in good shape and you can handle dancing for four hours uh, straight, then um, definitely put your hat. You need to go up to Dallas to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium and fill out the application there. And they're going to test you. It's not an, easy, not an easy road to become a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, but it is a very prestigious honor if you are chosen to wear that uniform, it is skimpy. Um, my seat at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium when they first opened up, we were right behind the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. And they danced through the whole entire game on each section of the of the stadium. They're dancing. So what you see is your, you see their butt, because it's like at eye level because they're up on a platform. And then you look down past them, like in between them, um, at the game that's playing. So those offers are very skippy, but um, they are very good at what they do. And those jump splits, oh my goodness, that is a feat in itself. But um, yeah, so I wanted to basically talk to you guys, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts and feelings on, you know, why are you passionate about your team? What makes it, you know, what makes you a Patriot fan? What makes you a Jaguars fan? What makes you uh, an Oakland Raiders fan? Any team, a Yankee fan, going to baseball, you know, um, a Chargers fan, a Steelers fan. What is it because of the state that you live in and you kind of just grew up with it? 
or is this, you know, your your cousin, your grandpa, your mom, your dad, you know, got you your first baseball or your first um, you know, football or took you to a game or or something like that um, that got you that passion for your team. What do you think about people who go nuts and burn their jerseys and, um, you know, beat the crap out of their televisions that their team loses? Um, I will tell you this, being an, an OU fan, um, being in Austin, Texas, which is the University of Texas, which is a Longhorn, um, I have attended a game uh, for what is called, um, it's called OU Weekend. And it is tandem. Um, it happens in the fall. And it usually is like the first or second uh, Saturday uh, in the fall. And it's called OU Weekend. It's um, the Red River Rivalry. Rivalry. <laughs> can't say that fast. And it is at the um, State Fair of Texas. So what they do is the, pe the fans go to the State Fair of Texas because it's at the Cotton Bowl, which is right there. And then they kind of meander into the Cotton Bowl. But it is literally pandemonium. Traffic is tremendous to get there. But I remember one year in 1984 that, um, no, in 1984, they um, had a Gosh, the fans got out of hand, they got involved, and people were getting, I remember one of my friends, she was like, yeah, I got Billy Club, because they were just fighting, or he's like, that move was back at everybody, and um, it was out of hand. So I have actually watched uh, an OU game at someone's house, not at the Cotton Bowl, but I've been there at the Cotton Bowl, so it's very, but, Fans here in Austin, they are super fans of the Longhorns. I want Sorry, I didn't mean to bring my throat here. They live and breathe orange. I mean, they are super fans. I mean, everything is a Longhorn. I mean, if they see OU cap, they're like, you know, they have something to say about that. And I wear my OU jersey, my hat, with pride because I'm an OU fan. My, my dad was in the military and he was stationed in Oklahoma. So I grew up uh, with OU. Um, I mean, that was a natural course of action for me. But um, you just, it's very fascinating when you hear other people's stories of how they became what I call is a super fan, where they live, they breathe, they die. In the point to where they name their children after certain athletes or their children after certain things, they have onesies and bottles and things like that because they are so in by sports, by a team. And um, I wanted to get you guys a thought on that, so tweet me at Simply Casey, and tell me what you think, what impressions you about your particular sports team. And also tweet me at Simply Casey, who do you think? Could it be a Patriots going to the Super Bowl? Could it be the Jaguars going to the Super Bowl? I wish it was the Dallas Cowboys that were going to the Super Bowl, but unfortunately, uh, that's not going to happen. So maybe next year. But um, yeah, so I wanted to see what everyone was thinking of who their Super Bowl, you know, contenders are. And don't forget that the Super Bowl, <clears throat> and those who don't want to watch the Super Bowl, there are cute alternatives like the Kitten Bowl, the Doggy Puppy Bowl. Those are great because you can adopt those animals. Oh, but the Super Bowl is going to be February 4th. And the halftime show is going to be Justin Timberlake. You know, the last time Justin Timberlake was there, he had that little mishap with Miss Janet Jackson. And so, um, this is so crazy. But the average cost of a 30 second, we're talking 30 second commercial at the Super Bowl is going to be $7.7 .7 billion United States currency. And, wow. 
there's a lot of money. If you if you were to break that down and figure out how much it is per second of those 30 seconds, that's quite a bit of money for a commercial. And of course, you know that those commercials are going to be wild and crazy and, you know, it's still up in the air. I mean, it's anyone's game, um, you know, who's going to be going. And I always, I never like to speculate who is actually going to be going to the Super Bowl. I always like to just kind of let things go. And then maybe like the week before the Super Bowl, I'm like, okay, who's, who's going there? But, uh, you know, I never like to say, okay, definitely these people are going, or this person is going. But uh, that's my, you know, philosophy on it. Of course, Glenn, he is probably a little bit different. He's probably like, I need to decide who it is weeks before. But he's more of a super fan than I am. But uh, to me, if the Dallas Cowboys are not going, I'm just watching this halftime show. But um, also, if you will tweet me at Simply Casey, tell me who your favorite halftime show is and, and why. And of course, um, anybody who is fortunate enough to go to the Super Bowl, um, I have never been able to get tickets to the Super Bowl or to get by, but maybe one day okay, with this one. But I will tell you this, is that I'm trying to think here of who possibly be going to the Super Bowl. I'm thinking that the Patriots probably go to the Super Bowl. I, I'm really, I'm breaking with tradition here, and I'm going to say the Patriots are probably going to go to the Super Bowl. I think, honestly, I think that they really have a good opportunity. I think they'll probably win this Because this, right now, straight up, they really feel like this is their year. They really do. Now, I could be, be wrong, but... Um, you know that this weekend is the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York England Patriots are going to be playing on CBS. And also, the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles will be playing as well. Now, according to that, they're basically saying that the Jaguars and the Patriots are pretty head-to-head. It's an even kill. But um, on the Minnesota Vikings and the Eagles, they're saying uh, it's going to be the Vikings who are going to take this. Now, depending on who, this is it, you guys, depending on who wins these games, Please don't do that. Oh, I guess you guys just pack up, you know, get your, your buffalo wings, get your pizzas, get your sandwiches, get your beer, <laughs> your sodas, everything, all geared up because this is going to be a battle royale. Um, you're going to find that this is going to be a really epic game. That's my opinion on that one. But I want to thank everybody who's tuning in here, and we are almost out of time. So if I can see on the clock right here, we are almost out of time here. We have just a few more moments left of the show, and I want to thank Arms Radio Global for hosting us today. And we want you to tune in on Spreaker and also on um, tune in. Also, you can watch us on YouTube, Facebook Live, and also on Periscope at Sports Insider. And Glenn Spillman will be here next week to the show as well because he is doing a play. He is an actor who's doing a play. So I will be filling in on him uh, and everything. And I hope everybody keeps warm right now. And hopefully this cold snap will be over and done with. I, I, I've seen the memes for it. We close our states and everyone laughs at us because we don't know how to drive on ice. It is true. We don't know how to drive. I, I personally hate to drive on ice. 
crazy. I mean, we've had people basically drive off of bridges because they get it's gross and she's slippery. But it's crazy right now. So, I mean, we're having some random power outages everywhere. So, yeah, so stay warm out there, you guys. And, so, go Patriots, go Jaguars, go Vikings, go Eagles. Um, may the best team win. We will see you at the Super Bowl. My name is Casey. Please watch Simply Casey coming up next on Arm Global Rate on Radio Global. That's being aired in over 60 countries worldwide. And we'll see you on the next show.